Hi everyone, Bill Lethman here for MoneyEvolution.com. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about how to pay off your debts fast. So this is probably something that's happened to almost all of us at one time or another in our lifetime, and that is that slowly we've accumulated a big pile of debt. So in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a strategy for dealing with that debt, and I'm going to get a, give you a way to tackle that debt and pay that off maybe faster than you would without the strategy. All right, so let's dive right in. So what I'm going to be walking you through here is a four-step process for uh, dealing with this debt and creating your strategy. Uh, so step number one is uh, to make a list of all of the people, all of the financial institutions that you owe money to. Uh, you can see I've already worked out a hypothetical example here. We're going to dive a little bit deeper into some of those numbers here in a moment here. But you want to list out uh, primarily four key things. You want to list the uh, financial institution or the person that you owe the money to, uh, the interest rate that you're paying on that loan. Uh, sometimes uh, you might have to dig a little deep on this. I know a lot of us get our statements uh, online now, so you might have to log in, get that statement, uh, dig in there, figure out what that uh, percentage uh, rate that you're being charged on that. You're going to write down the current outstanding balance of that loan, and you're also going to write down the minimum monthly payment. So just the minimum for now. We're going to dive into that a little bit uh, deeper here as well. So for example, on this credit card, if your minimum payment is 204, but you're really paying 300, uh, put the 204 down there, and you'll see why as we start to take a little bit deeper dive into the numbers. So step one is to make the list, and and actually this is a pretty good exercise here uh, because uh, I think it just makes us feel better. You know, so sometimes if we have some of this debt kind of hanging over our head, sometimes it can just feel overwhelming, and, and and we tend to make things a little bit bigger in our own mind than they actually might be. So uh, it can actually be a little therapeutic just to make that list and uh, write all of those different financial uh, companies down and say, hey, you know what, uh, hopefully you're going to say, hey, it's not as bad as I thought in my mind. Uh, so step two is what I want you to do is I want you to, uh, to call your lenders. And, uh, and especially on the credit cards that you might have, uh, what I want you to do is just simply ask the question, hey, is there any chance that I can get a reduction in my rate? I really want to uh, get a little bit more aggressive in paying this out, you know, kind of really kind of appeal to them, say, hey, you know what, uh, I've accumulated this debt, there were some things going on, I've, I've resolved some of those issues that uh, were happening maybe, and uh, you know, 17% is just a lot of interest. Is there any possibility that I might be able to get that knocked down? Um, the worst they can say is no, right? So, uh, and in a lot of cases, they will actually do that, especially if you kind of make a good case for that and say that, hey, I'm going to start getting a little bit more serious about uh, trying to pay that down. Uh, so that's uh, step number two. And then um, step three is what I call to kind of uh, refinance, okay? And there's a couple different... Uh, a couple different ways to do this, but uh, one of those is that, and, and in fact, you can actually ask this in step two when you're calling these lenders. Uh, sometimes they might have some special offers. They might have some 0% uh, interest balance transfers, and that can really kind of help accelerate how fast you're paying some of that money down. So there's a couple of things you want to keep in mind, though, when you're doing that. Sometimes these balance transfers have a fee attached to them. So even though it might be 0% interest for the next 12 months or sometimes 18 months or whatever that may be, uh, sometimes they might charge a 4% transaction fee. Uh, and so you want to definitely keep that in mind. Make sure you, make sure you understand uh, what fee they may be charging you for that. Uh, but even if they're charging you 4% to do that transaction, if you can put enough towards that loan over the course of, say, that 12 or 18 month time period, it might be very advantageous to, say, for example, transfer a 17% uh, credit card balance over to that 0% uh, card there for, uh, for a period of time. So refinancing uh, by doing a balance transfer is, is one option to do that. Uh, another option would be if you have, let's say, uh, a home and that home has equity in that, you could do a home equity line of credit. Now, they did make some changes in 2018, so you no longer get to take the tax deduction for the interest on a home equity loan, uh, but there's a couple things there. Number one is that you probably are going to get a better rate on your home equity loan than you would on some of these credit cards, especially if they're at the 9, 10, 11, uh, 17 percent range. Uh, so you might be able to basically wipe all of those credit cards out or all those debts and kind of consolidate those together. Now, obviously, there's some different schools of thought in this, and a lot of people don't like to put that extra uh, burden on their house because obviously, um, you know, if you defaulted on a credit card, uh, you know, nobody's going to come along and kick you out of your house because you're not paying your visa bill. But if you don't pay that mortgage, you know, there is that chance of, um, you know, maybe getting kicked out of your house or the bank foreclosing on your home. So be very, very careful on that. So if you do any of this refinancing, I have two very important rules, okay? So uh, number one, 
on is that you continue to make at least the same amount of minimum monthly payments as you're currently making. So if we're using this hypothetical example right here, uh, those payments, uh, they're at up to $1,160 uh, per month, okay? So especially in the case of, let's say, the home equity loan, uh, you might refinance all of that debt and your minimum monthly payment might be only $500 a month. Um, so if you continue to just make that $500 a month payment, what it's going to be doing essentially is extending out uh, the length of those loans. So it'll be much longer for you to pay those monies back. Um, but if you continue to pay at least the minimum payments that you're making right now, because likely what's happened is hopefully you've reduced that overall average interest rate by a pretty considerable amount, even just making those minimum monthly payments is going to pay those loans off much faster than they would otherwise if you just continue to make them uh, while you're being charged 9% or 17% or whatever uh, the case may be. Uh, the second thing is stop using your credit cards, okay? So if you go ahead and give yourself a clean slate, it could be very tempting to go back and say, hey, you know, the Super Bowl's coming up here in a couple of weeks and uh, we need a new TV. And so you swipe the credit card and now you've got uh, another credit card getting racked up again. And on top of that, you're still left with the home equity loan on top of that. So uh, to those two very important rules, make sure that you're following those. And then also too, what we wanna talk about is now we wanna see, okay, we'd like to allocate more than we can. So hopefully if you go through your budget, maybe you can find some ways to uh, maybe cut a little bit of your expenses out uh, and maybe you can bump that up from those minimum payments of 1160 up to maybe $1,500 a month or maybe more if you wanna get more aggressive. And uh, we've got some other videos on our YouTube channel where we're talking about some money saving uh, tips and strategies. And I'm in the works right now of putting some new videos together where we can help you kinda what I call find the money where we can help you reduce some of those expenses so that you can pay debts off faster, so you can have more money, let's say, to save money towards your retirement or go on the vacation that you want and uh, things like that. So, uh, so refinancing would be uh, step number three. So now the fourth and the final step in this process is to create our pay down strategy. And there's a couple of different ways to do this, but the first thing we want to do is we want to decide how much extra principal are we going to be able to allocate towards these different loans. Um, and they're, they're going to be going through your budget, maybe finding some ways that you could save some money. Uh, but you want to come up with something extra that you can uh, put towards that. And we're going to assume for purposes of our example here that you're paying an extra $400 towards these loans uh, for a total of $1,561 per month. So the question then is, well, if I'm paying an extra $400, uh, where do I allocate that? You know, one strategy, of course, would be to say, well, I'm just going to pay a little bit extra to each one of those loans. And obviously, if you do that, it's going to pay them all off a little bit faster than they would be paid off if you just let them go to uh, the length uh, with the minimum payments. Um, but another strategy might be to say, you know, we could pick the one with the highest interest rate and let's knock that one out of the way. And quite honestly, that might be the one that's going to give you the quickest pay down uh, strategy overall because you're going to be getting rid of the highest interest and getting that uh, that piece of it out of the way. Another strategy would be to look at the loan that has the lowest current balance. And coincidentally, that's also the one that has the highest interest rate. So in this case, if you allocated that entire $400 to uh, the loan that has uh, the lowest balance, the $5,000 here in this case. So if we look at just that one loan, that one credit card, if we just made that minimum payment, that $171 a month, uh, we know that just doing some simple math on that, it's gonna take about 38 months for that loan to get paid off. So a little bit over three years. If we took that $400 and allocated that to it uh, for a total of $571, that's gonna knock that down to 9.4 years. So from a little bit over three years to a little bit over nine months. Now you can take that extra principal, uh, the $400 that you're paying plus the 171, and now look at the loan maybe that has the second highest interest rate or the second highest balance. Uh, and this would give you a little bit of a snowballing effect. Um, what I like to do is something that I came up with called the cash flow improvement score that kind of takes a combination of some of these different strategies, uh, the interest rate that you might pay be paying, the outstanding balance, your minimum payments, and it looks for the loan that's going to give you the quickest improvement uh, to your overall cash flow situation. So it gives you a quick win earlier in this case. And the way we do that is we're going to take uh, the payment, the minimum monthly payment that you uh, have, and we're going to divide that by our outstanding balance of whatever that loan is, okay? So if we look at the car loan, just as an example, we would take $400, divide it by $6,000, and that's gonna give us a cash flow improvement of uh, 0 
Uh, and then if we repeat that process for all of the loans, I'll just fill those in really quickly because I calculated those in advance. Okay, and so the loan that has the, the highest cash flow improvement score is going to be this car loan right here, 0 0.067. And if we look at that one loan and saying, let's take that extra $400 of principal and add it to our current monthly payment, minimum monthly payment of $400, means that we're going to have an $800 allocation per month to that car loan. And that's going to get paid off with that interest rate and everything in 7.63 months. So that's actually going to give us a win a little bit quicker than even the strategy that a lot of people might follow, which is to look at the loan that has the lowest balance. And then now what we can do is after that car loan is paid off, now we have an extra $800 freed up there, and we can look for the loan that has the second highest cash flow improvement score, and that's going to be this credit card right here with the 17% interest rate and the $5,000 outstanding balance. And we can uh, now put $800 plus the 171, so now $971 a month can be uh, put towards that. And it's gonna be paid off in a little bit less than five more months. So in just about a year, you've actually paid off two very sizable loans. You've paid off the car loan and the credit card loan, and now you can go on to the third highest cash flow improvement, which is going to be uh, this credit card right here at 11%, and you're just gonna continue the process. So whether you have two loans, three loans, or 30 loans, hopefully you don't have 30 loans, but uh, however many loans you have, you're gonna go through this process and you're just gonna keep repeating that and keep, continue to allocate uh, those resources towards the loan that has the highest cash flow improvement score. So what we've been doing here is actually part of a guide that I put together uh, called the Money Evolution Guide to Understanding and Managing Your Debt. Uh, we'll have a link to that. It's totally free. You just uh, put your email in and we'll, you know, so we know where to send it and everything. Uh, but we'll send that out to you. It has the uh, formulas that we talked about here today. It has some worksheets for you to fill some of this out for your own situation. Uh, and hopefully that's going to be helpful for you. Hopefully this is going to be useful information, uh, help you pay some of the stuff a little bit faster. Uh, once you get some of those loans out of the way, it gives you more money to maybe save for your retirement, maybe take a vacation, uh, do some fun stuff, you know. So uh, anyway, I hope you've got some great value out of today's video. Uh, remember, hit that like or subscribe button and uh, check out our other videos and I'll see you back here soon. Thanks.